Russia's invasion of Ukraine is now approaching its fourth week. And signs are pointing to a stalemate as neither side is backing down. As the world's attention remains locked on Eastern Europe, the Chinese Communist Party is not only playing a behind the scenes role in the war, they may be gearing up for an invasion of their own as reports are coming out on how China has fully militarized at least three of several islands it built in the disputed China Sea. South China Sea, excuse me. Is China just flexing its military muscle or is it preparing to make a move on Taiwan? Here to talk with me about this is China expert Gordon Chang. He's the author of The Coming Collapse of China and The Great U.S.-China Tech War. He can be found on Twitter at Gordon G. Chang. Gordon, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much, Joseph. Well, it's good to have you. Now, on Friday, uh, President Biden spoke with Chinese leader Xi Jinping for nearly two hours in an effort to assess where China stands. After the China call, is always a force for peace in the world. We always stand for peace and oppose war. This is not only China's historical and cultural tradition, but also our consistent foreign policy. Therefore, we will make our judgment independently in an objective and fair manner based on the merits of the matter itself. We do not accept any external coercion or pressure and oppose any groundless accusation or suspicion against China. Gordon Chang, what's your response to that? Those are just mere words. You know, we have seen China fully back uh, Russian uh, President Vladimir Putin. And it's not just these elevated commodity purchases of oil, gas, coal. Also, China is um, removing restrictions on the importation of Russian wheat. We see China allowing its financial system to be used to, uh, for Russian institutions that have been sanctioned. And uh, China's foreign ministry has put itself at the service of Russia. And the big propaganda machines of the Communist Party and the Chinese central government have been amplifying these ludicrous notions we hear from Moscow. So all in all, we can say that China is a combatant in this war on Russia's side. There are a couple components to this. You refer to China as a combatant on Russia's side in the conflict with Ukraine. But last week, in seemingly unrelated news, they have militarized these islands in the South China Sea. They also sent a carrier into disputed waters in the Taiwan Strait. What are we to make of this? Well, China has been pressuring Taiwan with, for instance, these fly-throughs there of their air defense identification zone. But on February 5th, which was the second day of the Olympics, China actually flew one of its military planes over a Taiwan island. That's a violation of Taiwan's sovereign airspace. That's something that they hadn't done in four decades, which is a real indication that China's ramping up pressure. Um, as you point out, they sent one of their aircraft carriers through the Taiwan Strait a couple of days ago, and uh, they have continually been militarizing the South China Sea in violation of their promises to President Obama of September 15th, when Xi Jinping was in the Rose Garden. How would you interpret these actions? The timing of this is certainly not accidental. Almost nothing in this space is accidental. China is very aware of what's going on globally. Would this reasonably be perceived as a threat that China could soon make a move on Taiwan at the same time the world is distracted by what's going on in Ukraine? Well, these military maneuvers are certainly a threat, and China intends them to be that way. And we have seen this consistently over the course, especially of the last year, where China has had these continual um, incursions into the air defense identification zone and these very hostile flybys of circumnavigation of Taiwan um, with both ships and planes. So Beijing is trying to pressure Taiwan because it realizes that at this time, at least, it can't invade. So it's trying to force Taiwan's people to submit in advance. It's not working. And as we see the heroic resistance of people in Ukraine, more and more we're seeing people in Taiwan realize that they have to resist China. And, and that's a good thing, a new attitude on the island. And tell me what that means in Taiwan. There is no invasion currently. How do the Taiwanese people resist China at this point? They are now talking about increasing conscription. Um, they're talking about spending more money on their own defense. 
this is really a result of a couple of things. First of all, they can see that the United States and the international community are not rushing to Ukraine's aid in the way that they think we should. And so they realize that they've got to defend themselves. Um, this is because people in Taiwan, by and large, do not see themselves as Chinese. When we look at these self-identification surveys, more than 80 percent view themselves as Taiwanese only and less than 5 percent view themselves as Chinese only. So this is a real indication that people in Taiwan say, yeah, of course, we want good relations with Beijing, but we're not part of China. Do you think the developments in Ukraine so far and the global response to it have made it more or less likely that China would take an aggressive action against Taiwan? There are factors going both ways, Joseph, but I think on balance, um, this has really meant uh, more likely. Um, one of the important things here is that uh, there was a massive failure of deterrence. The United States, the 27 nations of the European Union, and Britain have an economy that is more than 25 times the size of Russia's. But Russia went ahead and invaded anyway. And I think China saw that and realized that Biden policy was essentially feeble. The other thing is that the invasion of Ukraine has, I think, started or accelerated a period of deglobalization. And in a period of deglobalization, China becomes a lot less important to other countries, which means that China can't intimidate them. Um, so I think that it sees it's got a closing window of opportunity to attack the island. Gordon Cheng, we greatly appreciate your time, as always, informing us of this very important part of the world and these related developments. Thanks for being with us today. Well, thank you so much, Joseph. I really appreciate it.